I know you would never want to miss anything that could affect patient care. EKGs can tell you a ton about a patient's cardiopulmonary status. Exactly. And you don't have to memorize anything. By the end of this series, you'll be able to tell whether your patient is having a new heart attack, an old heart attack, or something entirely different. The first step to good EKG interpretation is to understand the waves. Let's get started. Here we are next to the electrical activity of the heart. Let's pair this with our EKG tracing. The EKG tracing starts about 40 milliseconds after the SA node fires. This begins with a P wave. The P wave represents atrial contraction. Next, you get ventricular depolarization through the QRS. The QRS represents the electrical activity running first through the AV node, then through the interventricular septum, and finally to our ventricles. This is quickly followed by the ST segment. The ST segment represents the end of ventricular contraction and the beginning of repolarization. And the whole thing ends with the T wave, which is the electrical reset of the heart and its preparation for the next cardiac cycle. Whoa, that was fast. Yeah. Let's take a closer look at each wave. All right, here we have a 12 lead EKG. Where should we look at our P waves? Well, normal P waves should be upright in leads one, two, and upside down or inverted in lead AVR. Let's take a closer look at lead two, a great lead to look at P wave morphology. Here we have a normal QRS complex with a normal P wave. Normal P waves should be smooth, monophasic, and less than 120 milliseconds. Now, let's look at two abnormal P waves. Remember that when we look at P waves, the electrical activity in the atria takes longer to travel through larger atria. So, if we think about a right atrial enlargement, we would expect our P wave to be taller. Conversely, if we think about left atrial enlargement, we would expect our P wave to be longer. Hey Mark, what are you looking at? Oh, we're just looking at some P waves. Yeah, looks like you're looking at some right atrial enlargement. Yeah, how'd you know? Well, you know how right atrial enlargement's usually caused by a problem in the lungs? Yeah. My favorite pulmonologist always says you never sit on a pulmonary problem. Ha, <laughs> good get one. It? It's pointy. I get it. Maybe we should move on from this atrial talk to the heart of the matter. Let's talk about ventricular contraction in the QRS complex. The QRS complex can look very differently depending which lead you're looking at. In fact, you don't have to have all three components to make up the QRS complex. The Q is the initial downward deflection. This is followed by an upright R. It always has a positive deflection. That's the thing to remember about the R wave. This is followed by a downward deflection or the S wave. Now, let's take a look at how differently they can look. Let's pull up another 12 lead EKG. So here you can see that there are a variety of QRS complexes depending where you look. So a lot of people want to know what's the best lead to look at the QRS complex. I like to focus in on the precordial leads in V1 through V6. So let's pull those in and take a little bit closer look. Okay. In V1 and V2, you'll see that you have a very small R wave, that's that upward deflection, and then a large deep S wave, all downward deflection afterwards. Then you move on to V3 and V4, where the R wave and the S wave are about equivalent. Finally, in V5 and V6, you see that it's mostly just R wave, and sometimes you don't see any Q wave at all. That's okay, it's still the QRS complex. Hey Katie. Looks like hey, you have great R wave progression through your precordials. How long should a normal QRS complex be? Less than 120 milliseconds, or else I really start to worry that we're seeing interventricular conduction delay. That would be like a left bundle branch or a right bundle branch block. All right. We'll talk about how left bundle branch blocks and right bundle branch blocks affect our QRS later. Yeah. But for now, let's move on to the ST segment and the T wave. Sure, let's talk about how the heart gets ready for its ne next cardiac cycle. What you say about the T wave? Then you said, whoa, that was fast. Okay, so I don't say anything. For some reason in my head, I was like, what are you supposed to say about the T wave? But it's nothing. No, because I took that okay, over okay. so that we were balancing the knowledge. Yeah. I know you don't want to miss something that could affect your patient's care. EKGs are, can tell you a ton. Okay. 
Here we can see the electrical activity of the heart. Let's tie this together with our EKG tracing. Let's start with the P wave. Sure. The P wave represents atrial contraction. Next comes the QRS. The QRS represents the electrical activity running through the interventricular septum and then to the ventricles. Next is the ST segment. The ST segment represents the end of ventricular contraction and the start of repolarization. And the whole thing ends with the T wave. The T wave is when the ventricle electronically resets before the next beat. Man, that was fast. I think each of these waves has more of a story to tell. I think you're right. Let's start with the P wave. Uh, have a really good presence, so I think it's just we're warming up. Okay. Yeah. We have a really head start. A lot of other actors that I knew. Okay. Right, what are the good. three things you're gonna list? Um, the coronary blockage, uh -huh. AV block, okay. and should I say should I just say scar, or should I say like? Whether there's even, scar tissue you'll present. You'll be able to know if there is actually an actual infarction versus just as a scar tissue. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that's better than just saying yeah, scar? Yeah, I think, I I think listing the three things yeah. is awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think maybe if you just say like... So whether there's heart attack. Yeah, or... Um, you want to you say so if, if your patient had a heart attack... Or is actually having a heart attack right now. Yeah, yeah. So is there ischemia ongoing uh, or did it already happen? Okay. Something like that. You yeah. could say that, right? You, you want to use uh, is, not the word ischemia because okay. you then study pathology maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So you want to use like a heart attack. So you want to use the things that patients will use. Okay. You'll be able to tell even if the heart attack already happened and it's old or even a new one, it's actually ongoing. The simple thing you could say is, is this an electrical problem or is this a plumbing problem? Yeah, I, I like that. No, not, not in this phase. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to run. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay.